and then you bring the community to support you, mm -hmm. then you can really make big, big difference. Because myself, I'm just one person. But when the community comes with you, it's big, mm -hmm. it's really huge. And then uh, if you have these leadership skills and you're willing to take ownership and make the commitment, you know, then th this is um, the, where the magic happens. And I think this is how I got into this, you know, helping dogs, helping uh, raise funds for children and uh, women of uh, domestic abuse. And today I just see myself sitting here all day, uh, coordinating events, planning events, uh, designing events, and this is all my charitable work. And when you look at this, it's really just, combining my skills, which is uh, communication skills uh, <laughs> that I got after seven years Some doing my, management. and then my <laughs> event management uh, skills, and also now the love for animals that I, this is really the passion that drives me. And I really, you know, the, while I am alive, I will be their voice. I hope that people like you will help me spread this message across the island. Um, yeah. And I, I really thank you for doing this for me today. Yeah. But I think, you know, uh, When you are gifted with some sort of skills and when you have the community supporting you, it's not because you're good, it's because you are here on a mission. And I was just sharing with them, um, I was the speaker those days for a social club. They were congratulating me for receiving the award from uh, Skull International as the oh, personality okay. of the year. Can I hold this up? Sure. Uh -huh. so I was given this award from the Travel Industry Association as the personality of the year because I've been, uh, you know, I've been <laughs> organizing events and coordinating activities where I would bring together the clubs and members from Tokyo and Taipei, Kaohsiung, Taichung, Osaka and uh, Nagoya together to do business together in tourism. So, right. but I was yeah, you're talking about like hotels and uh, travel agencies, right? right? Airlines, kind of airlines too. Lines. Right, right. So now we are very close and then we are going to see them and they're going to come here and we might be able to do better and the stronger business and packages between Taiwan and Japan, promote tourism together, you know. I think when you receive an award like this, it's when your real job starts, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not because you receive that you can stop and enjoy it and display it and talk to people. It's, uh, they give you for some reason and I think that's because they, they trust you and they want you to keep doing this type of job, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me to be able to move the community to come and support me whenever I put an event together and raise all those money. It's really a blessing, but it's not a blessing that I just take for granted. Mm. You know, I've, I've worked on it, I've earned it. Uh, I put a lot of um, time on it. I had a lot of frustration going out because you, when you deal with um, volunteers, it's not like dealing with your paid stuff. You know, the, the amount of gratification you receive um, from, from doing this type of work and giving back to the society is, uh, it's really amazing. And if I could just tell you a story, and I, I hope uh, Sunny will be happy to hear this story. And I, Sunny? Uh, Sunny Chen is a magician. I, I organized this event one day where I wanted to raise, funny, uh, raise money for the dogs. And uh, the seats that were not sold, I invited the orphan children and some children from the Down syndrome. Okay. So they came and it was a Christmas and I called it the magical Christmas because my magician friends, oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. donated their time and they organized a beautiful magic show. It was so, so nice. I know, I, I watched this TV program that you went on you and uh, yeah, it was this event that you organized and all these magicians, yes. I'm saying, well, that's, they're that's, fantastic. there's so many of them. They are from Taiwan. Uh -huh. They're amazing, yeah. amazing magicians and they're very generous. Um, I met one of them, um, James. Uh, James, one thing that I remember from him is that I asked him to perform for a uh, event where I was raising money for the, um, the children to help them on education. And he told me how much he, he would charge me. Okay. And it was so amazing that after the event, when I went to pay him, yeah. he said that he would donate that to my charity. <laughs> He's so sweet. Yeah. So I got the feeling that, um, you know, after you came to Taiwan and you saw this serious, you know, stray problem, but actually there are a lot of Taiwanese people who really do love animals here in Taiwan, 
Although, correct me if I'm wrong, but do you think the Taiwanese people just needed someone like you to take initiatives to kind of like, you know, get them together and say, hey, let's do something. I mean, you're not Taiwanese. You're someone from who's just here and loving Taiwan. But do you feel that Taiwanese people are not, Taiwanese people are more conservative? Is that the word? I don't know. They, they're, they're not, they, they want to do things, but then they don't know how to go about doing it. And they just need someone more outspoken, more with, um, you know, who, who's always there to take initiatives and kind of like muster courage, you know, the person who muster the courage from everyone to do things. Do you think, do you get the feeling about Taiwanese people? I mean, I'm sure they're very thankful to have someone like you, Mayumi, helping out. And finally, having all these things happening, if it weren't for you. Do you feel yes, that? I never knew why I've been quite successful in organizing those events yeah. and, uh, and then getting so many followers and the people helping in both ways, uh, in helping me materialize those events and also, on the other hand, helping with donations, you know, bringing donations or providing venues, providing resources. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what is the secret and I don't know why more people would not be doing this. But I do have a lot of cases where I come up with a proposal and the people say, I can help, I can help, I can help. But I noticed that for, for this type of activity to happen, you need a leader. Yes. You need a leader that would have enough time, enough knowledge, enough resources to make the commitment and drive it through from the beginning to the accomplishment and the follow through. Because without this leader, there will be so many followers and nothing gets done. Yeah. And it's very sad because I have so many friends that got brilliant, brilliant, amazing ideas. Let's charter a boat and organize a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Let's call a band from the United States and organize a jazz night. Those are beautiful ideas. But if there is no one taking a lead on that project, booking the venue, negotiating the menu, calling people, raising funds, no matter how amazing those ideas are, yeah. it will not serve the purpose. Right. I am also not doing the right thing. I need to teach people. I need to share. I was just going to say, please do teach Taiwanese people. I think, you know, like you were just saying, they were coming to you and saying, can I help? Mm -hmm. They're more like helpers but they need a leader. It's something about maybe the culture that even if they're burning inside, they really want to take a lead, but they wouldn't. You know, it's something that's holding them back. Yeah. But I think, yeah, do teach them, Mayumi. I, I think will. I think they need that. Mm. They're always, they, you feel like they're always there just waiting to hear a command mm -hmm. from you. And they can do a great job once yes. they're delegated these jobs. But other than that, you know, mm -hmm. I think they see something that they wish they can be like, Mayumi, you know, but they don't have it in themselves. Yes. So yeah, do teach them, yes. I think, yeah. It's because it overwhelms them with the commitment of saying, well, am I going to be able to materialize this? And I've also seen people trying to do it and uh, fail, uh, you know, of yeah. not having enough people or yeah. having logistics problems or not uh, anticipate certain situations that can happen when you host a project like this. Yes, I need to do my part also that not yeah, only do. doing this, but to share with people how to do it and how really, really fulfilling. You know, a lot of time, you know, I see myself organizing this, going crazy, end up canceling my trips, not going out on so many nice dinings and whinings that yeah. my friends, <laughs> my friends go because I'm busy. I'm waiting for uh -huh. phone calls. I need to do site inspections. I need to put things together. You I need to coordinate. Um, no, I have a lot of volunteers working okay. with me, but I'm involved in so many things with yeah. the tourism, with the Toastmaster, with the, <laughs> with know. the International Women's Club, and it, you know sometimes it's just so hard to be involved in so many things. But the, the payment that I get back from this, it's so, so, so amazing. You know, I like to share this story. Uh, my magician friend, Sunny, because when I invited Sunny to do the show for Christmas, he happened to pick a child from the audience to participate in his oh, magic show. Okay. This little boy, he's an orphan child. We don't know what happened to, to his parents and why he was actually put into the care of an orphanage. That day, you know, something happened to him. He, he had a breakthrough because he enjoyed so much. He was enjoying that moment. But honestly, I was worried that Sonny picked that boy because that boy um, is not so easy, outgoing boy. So I was worried that yeah. he would actually react right. or take it 
offensive or, or aggressive. But it, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. He enjoyed the moment. And I remember a day or two days later, we have the collection of the donation. And we went to the, the orphanage to give the donation to the center. And this little boy came out and he hugged me. He hugged me so hard. I remember I had my sunglasses here. He broke my sunglasses. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then uh, all he could say is Moshu, Moshu, magician, right? Oh, yeah. Moshu. Yeah, Moshu. Moshu. And then he was a magician. And then the, the caregiver says, now he wants to be a magician too. Oh, wow. But you know how wonderful it is for this little boy that uh, I think when they come at the age of 17, they need to leave the, the orphanage because they're oh. boys. Girls can stay, but the boys need to leave. Oh. So they will be on their own. It is a kind of concern to the, the center what these young boys will become, what mm. sort of education or career or what future will be for them. Now for this boy, he has a dream now. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a magician. Yeah. He has a reason to look forward. Because, you know, a lot of time when you don't see future in their eyes, it's just so hopeless and we feel hopeless. But when I heard that from him and I said, oh my gosh, this was to me, that little word from him, that he wants to be a magician, yeah. made the entire effort worth it. Worth it. You know? Yeah, even if I just had... to affect one child, yes, right? Yeah. I had over 300 people yeah. in that place. Yeah. Maybe we donated, I don't know how much, I don't remember. It. We, we raised quite a lot of money. We donated to the sanctuary, we donated to this orphanage, and we donated to this other organization that I am the international spokesperson. But it was that little word, yeah. that little boy's brightened future yeah. that made the entire event worse. So I always tell people that it's not how many people you, you touch, how much you give, mm -hmm. or how big your event is, mm -hmm. but it's really how you make one person feel Mm -hmm. and how you change this entire world. Because, you know, for me or for the people, might be saying, this is just a little boy. Yeah. But for this little boy, it's his entire life, life. Yeah. that will change, isn't That's it? Yeah. So this, yeah. is, this is huge. And this is the message that I want to take to whoever wants to do charity and they want to do big, they want to be huge, they want to... I don't know, some people find gratification on the number of attendance or the number of money that they raise. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's really the minds and hearts that you can touch and uh, the life that That's you can great. change. All right. Well, Mayumi, where do you want to go from here? I still have so many ideas to do. <laughs> I, I just started this um, new project, uh, promoting this new project with my um, Pet, the Friends, uh, Pet Friends Association. It's called The Scene Project. The they, Scene? Mm -hmm, it's called Kanjian, means... Uh -huh. The Scene um, Project. Okay. We are trying to uh, promote the dogs that are in shelters. Mm -hmm. You know that now some shelters in Taiwan became non-killed. So it's becoming full and it's stressful for the dogs, stressful yeah. for the, the people who work there and uh, they do their best to uh -huh. get the dogs adopted, but it's not enough. So many free um, social media platform. We are now taking photos of these dogs and telling those stories, okay. putting on our Facebook and asking friends to share. And it's unbelievable how successful this project is. Oh, they good. get adopted right away. And we don't know who is adopting because oh. it's a very sustainable. It's, it's, a, it's a global project? No, it's only all over Taiwan. Oh. We try to help all shelters here in Taiwan, the public shelters. What we do is our volunteers will go. They, they would take the training of the shelters. They will just uh, get to know the dogs that they take out for walk. They would write their stories and uh, they will post on their Facebook and it will be shared. It's, uh, and I did this experiment myself. I went to the shelter. I took a very short video where I talked to this dog. I said, how oh, sorry I feel for this dog because this dog is confused. He doesn't know what he did wrong mm. to be in that place. So, okay. uh, and then uh, I, I say, I promise we will find you a home. Mm. And then I just posted this on the, the same project website it went all over and uh, in just a few hours it had over 4,000 viewers wow. and the two days later I called the shelter because we don't host those dogs. I called the shelter and he was adopted. Wow. Mm. So whenever we posted this we tell the cage number, the ID number of the dog, the location, the time mm -hmm. the shelter is and then the location. So okay. whoever wants to adopt would go and then I have this pillow here. I want to show you this pillow and Beautiful. this is how actually we promote this adoption. Yeah. This is actually a dog in the shelter. Okay. And we place those in restaurants. 
uh -huh. or furniture stores. So we want people to scan this QR code. Oh, the, oh right. And okay. when you scan it, this. when scan you, you scan code. this QR right. code, and then you will see this in some um, coffee shops or in some furniture store. Yeah. When you scan this, you will read the story of those partic this particular Aww. dog. And it's beautiful. It's a video. It's so interactive. And then we try to keep the story very sweet, mm -hmm. nothing graphic. It's a happy, happy story of this cute doggy. If people really love it and it would give a chance to, to live a better life, mm -hmm. in the QR code, they will find the shelter location, timing and everything. And they will be able just to go there, deal with the shelter directly. We don't actually interfere on their formalities. Mm -hmm. So they go and then we just try to give those dogs more exposure and more hopes of getting adopted and also to let them know you know that they are in shelters but we are trying to help them because those are also lives yeah you know and right. it's it's working very very well oh that's great thank you so much Mayumi you've got some really great ideas and <laughs> thank you so much for doing what you're doing for our strays and even just like lighting a bright light in Taiwan. Yes, I love it. <laughs> you know, um, Taiwan is a, is a hosting country for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the country welcomes you so nicely, so friendly, I think it's... it's you want to give back. It's normal <laughs> okay. That, okay. that you want to give back to the uh -huh. society, right? And I yeah. wish I could do even more, but... You're doing a lot, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mayumi, for your time, and it's so great to hear your story. Thank you. And what you're doing for Taiwan, so we appreciate Thank you, Mayumi. Thank you. Thank you for coming Oops. to my house. Thank you for your little dogs. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>